one for the people that are kind of new to this, these black people being indigenous on, you know, in America. Could you please paint a picture of like pre-colonialism, how we were, what we were doing, colonialism, and like we said earlier, how we died, you know, by the by the by the pen. Could you kind right. of like walk us through that whole, you know, that whole process? So um, <clears throat> before the conquistadors came in search of the gold and the wealth of the land, what we were, the way that we were living was under matriarchal rules, right? And um, we all had family banks. We didn't have a centralized banking system. Um, and that's what they captured the banking system with the bank robberies, the, uh, the Billy the Kids and the um, Bonnie and Clyde's. Those were all staged robberies and for the purposes of seizing our banks, right? So the people start listening to the people that came in telling them how to centralize the banking system. And this was warned against by the founding fathers. But before they came, um, we didn't have war over here. We didn't have prison over here. We had every shade of people. Um, that's why it's called the Great Melding Pot over here. And we didn't get involved in the skirmishes that took place on the other lands across the water, right? But then they involved us when they came here in 1492. They actually came in the 1100s to scout the land. And once they uh, seen they was losing the war in Europe, they decided to come and uh, sack our land. So they gave us a Bible, and the Bible was the beginning of our downfall. So the appearance of legitimacy using the paperwork of an interim government is what's been keeping us in bondage. Their uh, book say that we have to be freed from the law and delivered unto grace. And the grace is the royal noble character of the people, of the people. And so in order to be released from the law, you have to find your sovereign capacity. So what do we use for references the Dred Scott case? They said that Dred Scott was three fifths of a human being, and that's why um, the black man had no rights that a white man was bound to respect. <clears throat> what we didn't know at that time was when they say a white man, they talking about um, uh, the royal family of Europe that came over here with the conquistadors as the attackers in a fifth dimensional chess game known as a, a conjure war. Right. So when they came over here, they locked us down using the paper chains and the paper chains is called adhesion contracts. So they use their uh, the story of the Mayflower. The Mayflower's real original name was called the good ship Plymouth. So Malcolm said that we didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us. What is he talking about? He's talking about the allegation um, in the, on the uh, world court that we crashed our land mass into the good ship Plymouth. They changed the name from Plymouth to Mayflower, right? So this is a cover-up. They wrote the contract in the blood of Chris Atticus, um, because the blood of the Romans should not be spilled to pain, and they use this Babylonian money back to uh, kind of the contract and the contract is called a constitution. It is a secondary constitution to the original constitution that was governed by the people of the land. So this is how they came in and swindled us out of everything with adhesion contracts. Okay, so that's you know it, it, it's interesting because we don't hear about none of this. You know what I'm saying? We don't hear nobody has a claim, but at the same time. A lot of us as black people, or quote unquote, African-Americans, a lot of them are say, oh, you know, my grandma said I was Cherokee. Oh, my God, grandma said I was Choctaw and et cetera. We're like, you know, and we're thinking that, you know, we like the Indian power of people on, you know, like on uh, what's that show? The um, the uh, the Lone Ranger. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Tonto. Tonto. And all that. Yeah, Tonto. You know, Tonto, a Spanish word means stupid. Mm. 
<laughs> that makes more sense. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But so so basically what you're saying is that a, a lot of these, a lot of us here that we're already here, all these tribes you're talking about look like well, woolly haired individuals that look like me and you, correct? No, not all of them. You had, well, tribes, yeah. you had mm. tribes that were of Asian descent. Mm. <clears throat> but most of them was from the West Coast, South mm-hmm. uh, Pacific coastline mm-hmm. because we used to do trade with Asia on the West Coast of the United mm-hmm. States with both China and Japan long before um, Columbus ever came. Mm-hmm. They found those ships from those traders that we used to trade in goods and services for. And we also traded wives among the royal families to mm-hmm. make uh, political and family ties and to uh, give us a union across the water. Right? Mm-hmm. Same thing on the other side, on the East Coast, we was trading with African nations hundreds of years, thousands of years before Columbus ever came. Mm-hmm. So that tell us out the gate that that's a bullshit story mm-hmm. that Columbus didn't know where he was going. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. They calling us Indians because he thought he was going to India, but India wasn't India yet. So what mm-hmm. the fuck is we talking about? Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. India was Hindustan. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm-hmm. And um, so wh- where's we getting this Indian shit from? Mm-hmm. Then they gave us the t- other titles, the Negroes, the Moors. None of those are our, self, uh, our self-identifying terms. When you let your enemy define who you are, then you become your enemy's servant. Mm -hmm. Right? So you have to make your own proclamation as to who you are. You got to go from three-fifths compromised, Mm -hmm. right? Because you compromise when you're in incompetent status in law. Mm -hmm. But when you fully realize, you five-fifths. Once you five-fifths, you are a whole. And now they don't have jurisdiction over you because you can see they hold shenanigans for what it is. That's why you never see, like for instance, my field of study was law, medicine, and um, and history, mm-hmm. right? So what do the law got to do with history? What do the history got to do with medicine? And what do the medicine got to do with the law? Mm-hmm. So when you start going through it, you see that they speaking in terms the on purpose using foreign languages to speak over the head of the common people so that we can't really understand what we're getting ourselves into when we're making these contracts with them and then they give us an overload of data to absorb in order to know make a competent decision so we just accept the adhesion contract is which is holding them in power um Another interesting point, I always see, like you said, I remember you was breaking it down about um, what you say, mirror tribes, right? Yeah. Um, Because, you know, whenever I look at ancient Tamaray or Kemet, whatever you want to call it, and I look at, you know, um, native, some Native Americans, I see the feathers, then I see a namuz, you know what I'm saying? I see an apron, you know what I'm saying? I see totem poles, I see obelisks. Um, what is, was the connection from there to, he, how, how, how did they intermingle? How did they have the similarities? The similarities of the mirror tribes is that they come from a same custom, mm-hmm. right? And the reason why you have mirror tribes, so if one tribe loses a part of the um, history, they can look at the mirror tribes' customs and traditions and, and remember what they lost, mm-hmm. right? When you over here, when you like a Mississippian, one of the oldest tribes, and you're looking across multiple cultures, you can read the, all of the cultures simultaneously together, and that's going to show you that what's going on on the land by frequency and vibration of the people. Mm-hmm. And as far as, like, I was going back earlier about, like, painting the picture, because, you know, I see these different, like, in Georgia, for example, we have the uh, Etowah Mounds that are right up above Atlanta, you know, and it's right on the river. I'm seeing all these mounds all over America, you know what I mean? So, and I saw, there's another big one in, uh, I think it was St. Louis. I haven't been there yet, but you know. They all over. There. Yeah, they all over. And you know, I, I personally, I had to, I had the experience um, to go to Tiwatiwakan, you know what I'm saying? And seeing the sun and the moon pyramid. And you know, and I saw brothers on the walls that look like me and you just sitting there doing their thing. You yeah. know, so, so 
is it what it, going back to like a timeline what time are we talking about as far as you know these these us being here on this continent you know building and you know the beginning of it look, and kind of like the downfall look at the emerald tablets of thoth mm -hmm. 3600 years ago thoth was instructed by his father to go and civilize that portion of the land called egypt mm -hmm. today mm -hmm. right that's 36,000 years ago. That's two, um, what they call, procession cycles back. Now, the complex is there to tell the people over here something. Because this, this is where the Sphinx is looking at. It's looking over here. Right? So if the Sphinx is looking over here, what is her posture saying? She waiting. What's she waiting on? She waiting on the master to come with a lion's paw in the master's grip and raise her from her state. And a, and a sphinx in flight is called a griffin. Right? And the griffin is the eagle-headed lion. Right? And the eagle head is represented by the chief. And the chief lead out and represent uh, the matriarchs. Because the chief that advocate the matriarchal uh, restoration is the one who understands that the land cannot be sold. It can only be contracted until the Jubilee year. This is the Jubilee year. So now we follow the Indigenous Rights Act, United Nations, Indigenous Rights Act, United States, and we follow the FEMA document for continuity of government. We understand that they have to destroy all GMO foods. So you're seeing all of these food places been being destroyed for the last two years, ever since God uh, um, destroying GMOs because in the new um, cycles, we will not allow GMOs to be entered into the food chain for people or animals. We want to go back to the organic living by restoring the land and then living off the land by restoring it. The land going to take care of all our needs as long as we take care of the land, right? And all this land is tribal land. And even D.C., because we staked the totem pole in D.C. to commemorate the 400 years, then they marched the totem pole for 400 miles, one mile to the year, right? And then they staked it in D.C. because that was the so-called crime scene that was classified as a independent city state okay yeah that that um <laughs> that makes perfect sense like i said i i've been ever since i've been um we talked about this story, ever since i've been t talking uh if you let me all look back at my other video i had a good good bill with the brother dr gabriel hernandez l and he started talking about you know um i think the name of it was we came before columbus you know we kind of build it on that now yeah, 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 yeah. That, that's what he titled. He, he titled that <laughs> after the book, but um, but um, it's all connected now. And like I told you earlier, it's a hot topic because a lot of a lot of people are starting. To, a lot of black folks are starting to look at their ancestors, and they come to find out, you know, that they um that they're native. You know what I'm saying? They weren't. Of course, they weren't slaves. Could you kind of build on that as well? Um, talking about specifically how we were all told in fifth grade that we were slaves. You know what I mean? That we all came in on all these boats. But in reality, that's farthest from the truth. Right. So because of the Kanja War that was tied to the blood oath contract that was written in the blood of Crispus Atticus, um, Albert Pike came in to institute the principles of what we know as the Illuminati. And the goal of that was, was it would take them 200 years to position themselves to take the entire world over. So it was the tribesmen around the world that came together to try to figure out a solution for this white supremacist um, colonizing agent that was traveling the world seeking to devour nations, right? So Sukarno called the Bang Dong Conference so that the original tribes of the earth can come together and figure out solutions. On the heels of the Bang Dong Conference, this is when, uh, uh, Malcolm started talking about going to the United Nations to argue the issue of human rights because civil rights and human rights are not the same thing. 
when you when you when you talk about like conjuring wars, because you know you know I know we know it is. Could you go like like a little bit more detail what a conjuring war is specifically? So they use uh, the principles of magic, and in the principles of magic, the magicians challenge each other to use their psychic ability, their spell ca uh, craft abilities to conquer in the wars. Um, a good example for you to do a study to understand what I mean by priest wars, you have to go to the King Tut era dynasty and read the history of Akhenaten and King Tut, right? And when you see that they went from the Aten, I mean the Amun to the Aten, and the conflict that it was causing, the resolution was to declare a conjure war, right? So it's the same conjure war. It's just a repeat cycle so that we can unravel the larger scale conjure war that the enemy that was in control of it lost control of the conjure. So now they have to call in the big guns, the only one that can figure out what went wrong with the conjure? Well, the thing that went wrong is the ones who were selling the um, the snake poison bought their own poison. And they took that shit too. Mm -hmm. Right? So it cost them to try to hold us down because they couldn't remember how to help us get back up. Mm -hmm. They didn't remember what they had did. How they had infiltrated us and challenge us to the war, feathers versus fezzes. Mm. Right? So we had to claim they fez by learning. So how did they raise us with poor education? Mm -hmm. So the only way that we're going to ever get out of this situation is we all have to start learning independently of the system. Right? Mm -hmm. So somewhere along the line, our elders understood one thing. We cannot allow the enemy to continue to educate our children because they'll never give us the tools and the resources we need to mm -hmm. overcome the problem that we face with that's mm -hmm. keeping us in this adversarial position, mm -hmm. right? So we being uh, held back on purpose, but what we're not realizing is the only thing they're holding us back from is claiming our birthright mm -hmm. because part of the competition was any one of us that claim the birthright to the land can bring an end to the conjure by exposing the guilty party. Mm. Right? So Noble Juror Ali didn't expose directly the guilty party. Mm -hmm. But he left a series of clues in his works mm -hmm. where those who don't understand the language of the chiefs, they will not never pick up the subtle clues that he leaves Mm -hmm. for us to know who the adversary is mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. now sooner or later they came to the conclusion the children are gonna have to start educating themselves mm -hmm. right <clears throat> why do they why are they gonna have to do the only way that's gonna happen is if they birth elders back in that was of high learning mm. Because they're going to come back in with a genetic disposition to research. Mm -hmm. This genetic coding, as they research, is going to start layer building an image in the subconscious mind that's going to serve as a surveying tool across the land. Mm. Right? So when you read all of the, the um, legends of off the reservations, right? Mm hmm they telling the legends that our elders told them when they separated our elders from our community to teach them on the reservation, the ways of our people. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. So they continuously tell the story that the elders told them. They talking about our big mamas with hair like this and skin like this. Those are the elders that was the griots, the storytellers. Mm -hmm. Right. So the griots and storytellers became researchers like J.A. Rogers, mm -hmm. right? Like um, Albert Church Ward, mm -hmm. like Gerald Massey. People who teach themselves, 
like Madam H.P. Blavatsky, mm -hmm. right? Indeed. She didn't go to, to they, these people didn't go to Catholic school or Protestant school. That's the truth. They were all educated on the land by experiencing certain things as they encounter new information. Mm -hmm. So this is going to leave breadcrumbs for Hansel and Gretel because it's going to take a male and a female to figure it out. <clears throat> she going to be the psychic channel. He's going to be the brain. Mm -hmm. Pinky in the brain. Mm -hmm. Pinky is Pinky Tuscadero. Happy days. Mm -hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. That was the old lady of Arthur Fanzarelli. Right? The fine. Mm -hmm. In the fines. Right? And the mm -hmm. fines is notorious for a leather jacket. Mm -hmm. A leather jacket means you cool. Mm -hmm. And Kanye wore a leather jacket because Big Tukey was cold. Mm. And Big Tukey was cold because Big Tukey was froze. Mm. Right? Mm -hmm. So the man on ice now, a man on fire, he's stomping with the big boots. The newest Kanye meet Kanye walking with the big boots. Mm -hmm. I've seen it. The big chief is ready to stomp across the land. He's telling mm -hmm. you he's coming. Mm -hmm. Right? So when we tell the stories of what's taking place on the land, it's because we can we can communicate with each other by little simple means like what we just did. Mm -hmm. We use each other as mirrors to see each other. Mm -hmm. And this is why the imposter always exposes himself, because in the mirror, he don't look like us mm -hmm. when he faced with us. Because mm -hmm. they don't have the same compassion for each other that we got. Mm -hmm. They don't have no love for us, but we had we show them love all the time. All the time, yep. They get jealous and murder us because we starting to shame. Mm -hmm. But when they start to shame, we try to prop them up, but they get up and so bright. Cause they're not us. Right. So <clears throat> we're talking about the feathers, the bird clans, the, this mm -hmm. is land that's a hootie, mm -hmm. right? The home of the bald eagle, mm -hmm. right? The land of the great condor, mm -hmm. home of the thunderbird, mm -hmm. right? The home of the great Quetzalcoatl, mm -hmm. right? The winged serpent, the plume mm -hmm. serpent, right? So what is we talking about? We're talking about restoring the chiefs all over the land. Mm -hmm. because we can't kick the enemy out using the enemy system because it's designed to never allow us to kick them out. So what is the remedy in law? You got to always have a remedy, right? So if I find a problem, I got to offer up the solution so the clans know what to do and how to organize, mm -hmm. right? So when we face with that opposition, what are we supposed to do, mm -hmm. Right? Study the problem till you find the solution and report the solution to the clans. The only way to get the enemy off our land is to use our system. Our system is designed to empower us. Mm -hmm. When we are empowered, the enemy cannot stand in our presence. Mm -hmm. And they are aware of this. And that's why they want us to always believe we are powerless. Mm -hmm. Keep playing on our emotions because as a spiritual people, we don't learn to read our emotions. We get absorbed up into the spiritual stimulation of emotionalism. Mm -hmm. Right? But when we go back to our old ways, we can't be religious. Yeah, exactly. Right? Spiritual people can't be religious. They can't be locked into a fixed doctrine, mm -mm. right? Because they realize that you have a right to be right mm -hmm. according to how you see the world yeah, out your yeah. eyes. Mm -hmm. That's your right. I can't take that from you. Your perspective, yep. Yeah. And I got a right to see the world how I see it. You got a right to agree or disagree with me. And I got a right to agree or disagree with you. It's not personal. I'm supposed to be my own man. And if you offer something that goes against who I am as a man, I have to turn you down. Mm -hmm. Right. Yep. My training teaches me that I can never lose if I support my brother in a righteous endeavor. I did. So in the literature of the growth and development, it tells us to aid and assist any and all righteous brother 
in any and all righteous endeavors. Mm -hmm. Right? So this is what I'm taught. The righteous endeavor now is to inform the people that if we re re revert back to our ways, go back to our tribal structures, start tribing back up. We already been tribing up. We just didn't know it. Because they villainized our tribes and called them gangs. They villainized our leader and leaders under COINTELPRO and murdered them, locked them up, and, and what you call neutralized them. They told you what they was going to do. In the COINTELPRO document, they tell you they was going to kill Martin, they was going to kill Malcolm, and they didn't give a fuck about Elijah because his ass was old. It's right in the admission statement. And what they do, they kill Martin, they kill Malcolm, and they didn't give a fuck about Elijah until they realized that even though he was old, his influence was great. Then they tried to poison him. And that's why they keep saying Elijah Muhammad not dead. We learned the art of war too, motherfucker. You ain't the only one to understand the art of war. We know how to use the wiles of war from the perspective of the wise general. We Hannibal in this bitch. Fuck your Alexander. Right? We Muhammad Ahmed. Mm -hmm. We don't give a damn about your Napoleon. Mm -hmm. We two signed the overture. Right? <laughs> mm -hmm. Fuck your Constantine. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they minimize our great accomplishments and they over sensationalize the accomplishments of lesser men to give them greater status in the psyche mm -hmm. of the people. Mm -hmm. Right? So the people that's behind the scenes gave us Winston Churchill, Franklin Delano Roosevelt, uh, Dwight D. Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? These mm -hmm. are the people behind the scenes told us they was the leader. Mm -hmm. But they're not taking care of us. Mm -hmm. right and every time we tried to take care of our own they took the leadership out so that we didn't know what the fuck we was doing mm -hmm. in our culture the one who leads the way takes the lead mm -hmm. if you know the path you got to take the lead mm -hmm. it doesn't make sense to have somebody who doesn't know the path take the lead when there's somebody who know where they are going already there mm -hmm. right because now you're going to be stumbling down the path following somebody doing guesswork. Mm -hmm. But the motherfucker that know the way standing back there acting like he don't know nothing. Right? So, I, uh, you said something very interesting um, that I wanted to go, go a little bit deeper into. Dealing with the spell of sleep, or like Dr. York called the spell of Leviathan, you know. Kingo. And Kingo, yeah. Um, and dealing with you were breaking something down. You were saying like there was like a like a like something similar to like a CERN, like they have over there in um what Switzerland, right. or that CERN machine. Could right. you kind of uh break that down a little bit more as far as dealing with well, how we that didn't, trap we was... didn't used to have to go to sleep. Mm -hmm. The CERN machine collapses the fourth dimension in on the third dimension. Mm -hmm. So we live in, in two dimensions simultaneously. Mm -hmm. When, what happens when you pull energy in two opposing directions? It loses power, right? Mm -hmm. Like a magnet, like yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So once it loses power, neither side of it, it's like taking one of the batteries out of a remote control and trying yeah. to change the channel. Mm -hmm. Right? Now, when you put them together, when you learn how to use your subconscious mind consciously, that's when you awake in the dream. Mm -hmm. Right? So they used a, the, a collider similar to CERN. Mm -hmm. And the goal was, was to trap the gods. That's what they said they was doing. Mm. And the gods they was trying to trap was the divine feminine beings that would take form periodically as fairies, as water sprites, fire sprites, mermaids what we call mythical creatures mm -hmm. when when they collapse the uh fourth into the third everybody now at a certain energy frequency has to take the dna structure 
of the human being, which is the highest developed physical form on the planet. Got gotcha. you. So I'm going to backtrack a little bit, going back to the um, the land, because, you know, when I first got information, it was back. Um, my first lecture I ever saw was <laughs> Ivan Van Sertima in actually Richmond, Virginia. Um, we came, they came before Columbus. He was doing a lecture on that. I went through, uh, you know, Bobby Hemet, all these individuals in the 90s. You know what I'm saying? Um, eventually, I got to Dr. York. You know what I'm saying? But when, once I got into the information, I started realizing you know, especially more so now that there was a timeline, like procession of these beings, you know, the, you know, Noble Dry Lee, um, you know, I'll even say Master Fry Muhammad, you know, I, I, people say Yahweh Ben Yah, it, it, you know what I'm saying? It didn't even matter. There was so, always somebody yeah, else. Yeah, it's a, it's a consistent uh, passing mm -hmm. of the message. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From one Could you person, break that down? Right. So it's like playing a game. Mm-hmm. Right, they just call it the game of the gods. Right, so it's part of the fifth, fifth dimensional galactic chess. All of the leaders on the land have to put all of the grievances out in the public, and all of the upcoming chiefs have to work on a part of the problem until they can solve all of the problems presented by the elders that came before them. So, this is why Noble Drew Ali said. I'm going to leave these people in power long enough for y'all to learn how to run a government because they had to give us a series of different contexts in which to work together in order to change the paradigm and to use our structure to remove the fiction on the land. So it's a, it, the, the procession, okay, and could, is there, a, is there, a, a backstory to it that connects all of them. You know what I'm saying? Is there a story that connects? Yep. Yeah. So they, please, they all connected uh -huh. by uh, signs and symbols, mm -hmm. by what we call left bumps and right bumps. Mm -hmm. So uh, in the early 1900, um, what's my man name? Uh, W. B. Du Bois was arguing um, education over being industrious. Where um and I can't think of my man's name right now. It wasn't Frederick Douglass, it was um anyway, they was arguing over whether the solution to our condition was education, mm -hmm. which was uh the position of Dubois. Mm -hmm. And the other brother position was we needed to be industrious and work generating some kind of economic upswing for the collective in the community mm -hmm. right so uh du bois position was you can't you can't be industrious if you don't have an education